Thank you, Carrie. It's a pleasure to be with you all today, and thank you for taking the time to be with us. Um, next slide. I think we're going to move to slide three. Next slide, please. OK, so I wanted to start with a problem statement. Um, over the last few years, I think there's been a growing consensus on the vision of the future electric grid. That is, it should be information rich, automated, flexible, clean, secure, reliable, and resilient, but there's been less consensus on how we get there. Um, and over the last five or so years, we've really struggled with implementation. An important obstacle in all of this has been how we manage the costs and risk of grid modernization, which you can put a little bit more simply is how to make sure we don't pay too much or invest in the wrong things. Next slide, please. Before we um, dive into the details, it's important to start with a bit of context on utility regulation and how it shapes utility investments in the electric grid. And I know a lot of you are very um, deeply steeped in all of this. Um, so, so bear with me. This is meant to be for those who aren't. Um, the first, the most important way that this occurs, this process of, of uh, how utility regulation shapes utility investments occurs is, is through the process in which federal and state regulators set the rates that allow utilities to recover their investment costs. So the figure on the right here shows a simple illustration of this process. Utilities plan for and make investments in the grid. Regulators then authorize utilities to recover these costs and the rates they charge to electricity consumers. From the timing of planning and investment through to utility cost recovery through rates, there's often a time lag and this creates risks for utilities. And improving, in approving grid investment costs that can be included in utility rates, regulators have to balance protections for consumers on the one hand, on the one hand with utility concerns that they may not be able to recover their cost on the other. And as, as a lot of you know, this balancing act is quite challenging. Through cost of service regulation, utilities have a built-in incentive to overinvest. More investment means more returns for their shareholders. To restrain the incentive to overinvest, regulators conduct after-the-fact reviews to ensure that utility investments are performing as, inspected, as expected. So in regulatory jargon, that they were used and useful. They also review utility investments to ensure that they were actually needed, um, that costs were prudently incurred. Both time lag and this process of regulatory review create risk for utilities, and utilities will often ask regulators to pre-improve investments to reduce their risk, pushing more of this risk back onto consumers. So getting the utility incentive right, incentives right, meaning setting an incentive framework that, that encourages utilities to make investments that are high value, low cost, and help us meet state policy goals is really at the core of this challenge of managing the costs and risks of grid modernization. Next slide, please. Um, in thinking about grid modernization, it will be important to make a distinction between the high voltage transmission system and the lower voltage distribution system. These two parts of the electric grid have different regulators and different regulatory issues. The high voltage transmission system is main, mainly regulated by the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission through though states uh, regulate transmission siding and in some cases the inclusion of transmission costs and utility retail rates. For the transmission system, key regulatory issues for grid modernization include a growing need for transmission to integrate renewables, declining or the impacts of declining load and higher adoption of distributed energy resources on transmission needs, siting and interstate coordination, and wildfire risk. The, distrib the distribution system, on the other hand, is exclusively regulated by state public utility commissions. Um, for the distribution system, uh, or is regulated, I shouldn't say exclusively, for the distribution system, key regulatory issues for grid modernization include encouraging demand flexibility, improving reliability, increasing rely resilience to extreme events, encouraging DER investments, mitigating the impact of high uh, solar PV levels on system reliability and costs, and beneficial electrification. Um, so our focus in the rest of this presentation is going to be on the distribution system, um, but we can come back to the transmission system in the Q&A if there's interest. And as Commissioner Tawney pointed out, there's this really important and interesting nexus between the high voltage transmission system and, and the distribution system that's, that's evolving. Um, and if there's interest, we can come back to that and talk about it in the Q&A. Next slide, please. One of the principal challenges, one of the principal challenges for managing the costs and risks of modernizing distribution systems is how utilities and regulators should evaluate these costs and risks. 
Um, and thinking back to that process of utility regulation, the challenge is really how utilities demonstrate to regulators that their proposed investments are economically sound. Economic evaluation sounds like it should be relatively straightforward, um, but let me give you a few reasons why it, it can be complex and challenging. The first is, the whole, is a whole versus parts problem, which is the challenge of finding a balance between a holistic vision investment strategy for grid modernization on the one hand, and the reality that many of the component investments will support different objectives and have different evaluation methods on the other. The second challenge is resources versus the grid or maintaining appropriate separation between how utilities evaluate investments in the actual grid and in the management of the grid versus investments in distribution level resources like rooftop solar or customer sided batteries. Um, the third is that many grid investments will have joint and, and joint and interdependent benefits, which means that the benefits will be hard to isolate and will depend on other investments. Um, so communications infrastructure that allows utilities to better monitor and control the grid is an example of this. Advanced communications infrastructure could help us do lots of things, improve reliability, enhance resilience, integrate distributed energy resources, increase flexibility, um, but its value will also depend on other investments like monitoring and control systems, advanced metering, data analytics capability, and the like. So for these kinds of investments, what we've been calling core investments, economic evaluation is more challenging. Um, and then the fourth challenge is uncertainty, including uncertainty over cost, the timing of need, um, and technology maturity and potential technology obsolescence. Next slide, please. So to help states and utilities with these um, economic evaluation challenges in, in volume four of, of the Department of Energy's Modern Distribution Grid, this is a strategy and implementation planning guide, but we developed a, a framework for economic evaluation. Um, and this framework aims to inform state approaches to evaluating the economics and managing the costs of, and risks of grid modernization investments, uh, while at the same time realizing that because of the diversity in regulatory philosophies and practices among states, there won't be a textbook approach. Next slide, please. Um, the economic evaluation framework in the guidebook is broad and it has three main stages planning, deployment, and evaluation. Um, the planning stage begins with this process of setting and prioritizing objectives that Paul, Paul talked about. What is it that we want to achieve with grid modernization and which goals do we want to achieve first? And then setting budget, uh, budget, budget limits. How much are we willing to spend in any given time period? The next step in that process is coming up with, with a system to coordinate among the, the numerous regulatory processes that are related to grid modernization. Everything from utility distribution planning to how utility rates are set. The third step is identifying specific grid investment needs, priorities, and timelines. Fourth step is in linking these needs to objectives and developing performance metrics so we can figure out whether investments are actually meaning, helping us to meet our objectives. And then the fifth and last step is in, in planning is, is uh, actual economic evaluation of specific investments. In the guidebook, we're argue, arguing for a more targeted approach to evaluating investments. We'll talk, come back and, and talk about what this means in a second. Uh, after the investments have been evaluated and regulators sign off on them, utilities then make the investments. And lastly, utilities do after the fact evaluation of their investments against performance metrics and adapt their investment strategies accordingly. So this is that, that sort of short-term versus long-term planning that, that Paul talked about. Um, this process of continued after the fact evaluation and adaptation is really, really critical. It's important to realize that everything is not going to work out like as planned and that we have to learn and adapt in, in this process. Um, and this sounds sort of trivial to say, but it's, you know, it's impressive how, how little we do of this, of this learning and adaptation. Um, next slide, please. I, I wanted to go into a little bit more detail on two elements of this framework. The first is setting and prioritizing objectives. Um, so different objective, different jurisdictions will set different uh, objectives and priorities is not really a one-size-fits-all approach, but it's really important to, to have this process of setting um, objectives and prioritizing them because the, the prioritization of objectives will shape the prioritization of investments. So for instance, a jurisdiction that prioritizes retail competition and customer choice uh, 
um, may prioritize things like advanced metering and communications infrastructure that enables uh, customer choice, more customer choice. Um, a jurisdiction that prioritizes distributed energy resource integration may prioritize investments in things like metering, monitoring, sensing, and control systems that enable higher DER penetrations. Jurisdiction that prioritizes reliability and resilience um, uh, reliable and may prioritize investments in feeder upgrades, distribution automation and outage management system that reduce outages and improve restoration times. Um, so these objectives obviously aren't exclusive. You could prioritize DER integration and reliability and so resilience. And there may be areas where the investments uh, uh, required to do the, meet these different objectives overlap. Um, but it's very unlikely that we're going to be able to do everything at once. And so it's important what to try to figure out what, what to do first. Um, this also means thinking about grid modernization as a long-term decade or decades long process rather than something that we're going to do in the next general rate case cycle. Next slide, please. Oh, and we have a poll. The question is have clear modernization objectives been established in your jurisdiction? We'll just take a minute for this poll. Just a reminder, enter your questions in the chat box at any time. Send them, please, to Ask Me Carrie, or you can send them to everyone. We're going to break, Fritz, in about five minutes uh, to ensure time for questions. Okay. Thank you. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'll read the the result really quickly. So, not yet is the is the, was the main. So, the question was: Have clear modernization objectives been established? And not yet was the dominant answer at fifty nine percent. Okay, thank you, Dominic. Um, I'm, uh, uh, the other element that I wanted to talk about um, really quickly is is um, investment categorization and evaluation. This is really a lot of the core of what we're talking about. Um, so for categorizing investments, we have four categories in the report. These are based on investment drivers. The first category is investments that are driven by joint and interdependent benefits. Um, these are core platform or core or platform investments. And, and an example might be the communications infrastructure that we just talked about, monitoring and sensing equipment, or in some cases, distribution management software. The second category is investments that are needed for policy and standards compliance. For instance, this could be investments needed for compliance with reliability and safety standards or investments that are needed um, to proactively integrate DER. An example might be circuit upgrades in parts of the distribution system that have chronically low reliability. And next is investments that have net customer benefits, meaning that these investments will lead to net benefits in the form of reduced bill savings for some or all customers. And importantly, this is the grid investment and not the resource investment. So this might be um, distribution energy resource management systems or DERMs in parts of the distribution system that have high DER adoption. And then lastly, investments that are driven by customer choice. This could be community investments in undergrounding or customer interconnection costs for distributed solar. For, for the joint and benefit and compliance investments, we were recommending a least cost best fit methodology to evaluate them. Meaning the idea here is that we're going to make the investment um, anyway, um, because we've determined that we want the functionality and the capabilities. And, and we choose investments that provide the best fit in terms of providing that functionality and those capabilities at the lowest cost. Planning and spending limits are really, really important for these kinds of investments. Um, because we want to get the core investments right and at the same time avoid rate shocks. Um, for investments that provide net customer benefits, we use a traditional recommended traditional benefit cost about analysis. So if the investment doesn't pass a traditional cost benefit cost threshold, then we don't make the investment. Um, and then lastly, customer choice investments are self-supporting, meaning that they are paid for by customers and presumed to be cost-effective. From a regulatory perspective, we don't really need to worry about these. 
Um, next slide, please. So this is just a, a, an image from a decision making tree that can really that can help with with kind of the in the process of categorizing and thinking through how to evaluate different investments and in the interest of time I'm not going to go through this, um, but you but um, um, the slides are public are available so you can go through and, and read through this next slide please. Um, so in, in this presentation, we have um, several um, examples of strategies that are that are state strategies that are consistent with these with the framework that we've put together in the guidebook for managing costs and risk. And I'm, I'm just going to go through the titles, but not go through these in detail in the interest of time. So the first one is um, developing objectives and priorities through stakeholder initiatives. So these are these sort of big stakeholder initiatives that men are meant to bring everybody on the same page about what the goals and objectives of grid modernization are. The second is prior giving pri uh, greater transparency on, on needs, priorities, and costs by requiring utilities to develop both long-term grid modernization plans and these near-term action plans that, that give an idea of what actual investments are going to be. Next slide, please. Um, the third is to requiring utilities to conduct alternatives analysis and risk scoring for, for investments. So, so coming up with a risk, uh, risk analysis framework for investment. Fourth is encouraging and, and approving well-designed grid modernization pilots as a way to, to kind of try things out. Fifth is using budget caps and uh, to limit potential rate impacts. So using budget caps in, in, a, in, a, in a general rate case cycle to limit any potential rate impacts. Um, and then the last one is designing performance metrics and linking those to utility incentives. This is really, really important. Next slide, please. So one of the key questions in all of this is what is the role of, of, uh, of legislators versus vis-a-vis -vis regulators? And so this is a, just a, a kind of a, a high level list of potential roles that regulators can play. I think the, you know, the role of le legislators tends to be overlooked in all of this, but they do play a really critical role and it's important to think critically what that role should be um, given vis-a-vis -vis state's goals. Um, next slide, please. Um, and then lastly, we uh, kind of ended up with this, this list of, of questions that legislators and regulators should be asking. I think one of the things that, that we've taken away from the last few years of interacting with states on, on, on questions around grid modernization is that it's really, really important to ask the right questions. And so this provides just a, a list of a sort of a checklist of questions that state legislators and, and regulators can ask utilities and themselves of, of you know, of, uh, about, you know, are we doing the right things to just to kind of set up a good grid modernization process. Next slide, please. And so lastly, I'll, I'll leave you with um, some background meeting, uh, background reading, um, and I'll thank you for your time. And then I think we'll move to Q&A. Uh, 